Hi guys, and welcome to this presentation. I'm Anthony, and today I'm here with Renaud, one of the PhD students of our lab, to present our latest work on semi-supervised learning. In this video, we're going to show you how to improve any of your deep learning models in a simple way. Let's go. Data is the new gold. If you're working with artificial intelligence, you've already heard this saying. Today, we will show you that this is even more accurate than ever. Let's first do a quick recap of some basics of artificial intelligence in our context. The goal is to automate a task by building a model, for instance, detecting people on the streets or vehicles on the road. In the supervised learning setup, we use a dataset comprising annotated data. Then, the goal is to minimize the error of the model on our dataset by tweaking the model parameters. In practice, we are often facing situations where we have access to lots and lots of raw data, but very few annotated ones. As you might guess, it takes time and money to annotate those data, especially when it needs to be done by experts. Let's take the practical case of detecting vehicles from satellite images. We can have access to our whole planet approximately once every week. So over time, this adds up to quite a lot of data. However, to train our model, we don't just need these raw images, but actual annotations specifying where the vehicles are. So let's say that you're very motivated and that the first few weeks you decide to annotate some region of the world with all vehicles. This gives you a small set of annotated data that you can now use to train your model. Then, over the next weeks, you simply collect the images since you don't have time to annotate them. Unfortunately, you cannot use those to train your model, right? So, should you simply throw them away? Well, obviously not. Even though the data is not annotated, it is still valuable. And as you will see, may serve to improve your model. This is what we propose in this work. For our method, let's first get back to the simple pipeline we described earlier. A first model that we call the teacher is trained in the usual way with a small amount of annotated data and reaches some performance. Now, the goal is to increase this performance by adding new data which are not annotated. This is what we call raw data. For that, we start by producing pseudo annotations with the teacher on whole raw data. This basically means predicting where potential objects are in our case. Each prediction is associated with a confidence score, reflecting the certainty of the teacher in its prediction. Now that we have access to these new pseudo annotations, we can use them to train another model that we call the student on both the annotated and pseudo annotated data. This is why it's called a semi-supervised method. We are both using annotated and raw data to train our final model. The next step is to correctly handle the predictions with high or low confidence scores. In this work, we propose three different strategies. The first strategy is the most straightforward one. We simply separate the predictions by the confidence score with a single threshold. Predictions with a high confidence score are associated to objects that need to be detected, and the remaining one are put in the background and should therefore not be detected. However, one problem is, how do you find a good threshold? Since the confidence score is continuous, it is hard to draw a line perfectly separating true object from the background. This is why we propose a second strategy. Now we consider two thresholds, one to select the true object with high confidence, and another to separate the background. In between these two thresholds, we introduce doubt by telling the model not to consider those predictions. In practice, this can be done, for instance, by setting the loss associated to this prediction to zero or simply by not showing this example during the model training. This gives the model more flexibility in handling unsure predictions. Finally, we proposed a third strategy that gives progressively more and more importance to predictions with a higher confidence score. This is all very intuitive, right? The higher the confidence score, the higher we should trust the predictions. Once again in practice, this may be done by multiplying the training loss by a factor that depends on the confidence score. Now, if we get back to the pipeline, we can iterate several times the whole process. The student can become the new teacher and will now produce new and better pseudo-annotations on the raw data. 
and a new student can be trained on those new annotations and achieve even higher performances. We tested our method in two use cases for object detection. First, for the satellite images, we used a dataset comprising 20 different objects, such as airports, vehicles, and bridges, for which the annotated dataset consists of approximately 2,000 images, and we have an extra 17,000 raw images at our disposal. Now, let's take a look at the gain we can achieve compared to the teacher that only uses this small annotated dataset. As you can see, we are able to systematically improve the performance for all strategies and at each iteration. The best performance is achieved with progressive doubt after the second iteration. Let's now take a concrete example where we can see the improvement brought by our method. In the first prediction of the teacher, we can see that the boat and the arbors are missing. Then, the first student is able to detect the boat, but still misses the small arbor. Finally, the second student perfectly predicts all objects. In the second use case, we wanted to accurately detect soccer players from broadcast videos. As you know, this is the main topic that our lab has been working on for the past few years. If you've been following our projects lately, you've probably seen that we've recently released new annotations on our SoccerNet dataset. Feel free to check out the video on the subject. In there, we have provided approximately 25,000 frames annotated with multiple objects, such as the players, the referees, and the ball. However, these 25,000 images only represent a small fraction of the available frames of SoccerNet that is composed of around 800 hours of videos. If we only take one snapshot every second, this amounts to millions of frames. So we did just that and collected an extra millions of frames. This allowed us to train our model following our semi-supervised pipeline, and we noticed similar improvements of performances compared to the satellite images. The models are getting better and better as we iterate. All right, so let's sum up our take-home messages. First, Instead of storing or throwing away your raw data, use them to improve the performance of your model using your simple pipeline. Second, to handle unsure predictions of the teacher, introduce doubt based on the confidence score. This can be done very easily in most setups. As we have seen, our pipeline is completely generic and may be used for all kinds of input data and all kinds of tasks. I'm sure that we will be able to use it on your own projects. We have got a whole paper covering these topics and our code is available on GitHub. So don't hesitate to check them if you're interested. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you want to know more about the work we do in our lab, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments down below. Thank you and see you next time.